Intimate Stranger by Brighton Breitenbach is about the origin of writing. Ancient Chinese law has it that writing evolved from magical signs, from runes and the symbols or depictions of the bones cast by diviners. On the day humans began to codify the signs and their meanings by repeating them at will, Without the help of diviners, they began, in effect, to trace the openings to the unknown. Gods and demons wept because now there was no longer heaven or earth. Humans had interjected themselves between reality and dream. Now there was a go between straddling the known and the unknowable. Something autonomous had come into being.
Walking on the local Jaokena road, I see men with shovels and hoes waiting. Only seven in the morning, the dally beside the road. What draws me to them? The growing number of idle men? Or in their poses and glances, how difficult it is to distinguish them from displayed wares, bread and Coca Cola, granots and water, biscuits and akara. When the lift pans above their shoulders, place kilograms of cement on their head or shovel gravel, they know they do a job considered of low repute. For some of them, masonry and bricklaying is a temporary alleviation of unemployment. For others, there is no foreseeable alternative, and hence, they meet their fate with equanimity. Most Nigerians know that the standard food for laborers is a loaf of bread and a bottle of Coca-Cola. There are food stalls close to each house under construction, or in some cases, food hawkers who come daily. When these women bring food, when a man has taken a break from lifting building materials, there is an exchange of rumor, gossip, news, or experience. There is a little boy who has grown up close to water. He is on a boat in the middle of a lake. He sees neither east nor west, only water. He has never learned how it is possible to see pathways on a sheet of water. the memory 
of its mother. It is to her it strives to return, imagining roads we follow home. One day at dinner, while Mancia Diawara was making one world in relation, his film on Edward Glisson. The filmmaker turned to the philosopher and asked, How can I simplify your ideas for a wider audience? Glisson looked at him and smiled. If I were you, I would wait until we were in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, then point the camera at the mass of water, its abyssal expanse. And that would be the whole film in one shot. The, the ocean, ocean is the world, world. Without, without partition and division, only, only depth, depth and expanse. Because, because of its depth, depth it serves as a burial place. place. So, so if you, you point, point the camera at a mass of water, you get an opaque representation of gods and languages and objects and sounds, everything truly with bodies from the West African coast. The opacity of the sea is therefore its rich, dangerous promise. Some will drown, and some will reach harbor. In Bamako, he is known by by name, which he tells me with no hesitation. But his actual name, Gabriel, he tells me in a whisper, in confidence. When I tell him our mission, overland from Lagos to Sarajevo, along the coast, he says he is happy that we aren't traveling through the desert. There are many burial places in the desert he begins to avow. We find stones in the desert. We remove the stones. We see a decaying corpse. The name on the document remains legible. This is how we recognize the person. In the desert, death means nothing.
Lejam returned from his travels, first to West and North Africa, then South and West Europe. There was a world prior to my journeys, then a world after. He told me this. The people I have seen, the people whose stories I cannot forget, he said. The people who die trying to cross over. The young boys encamped behind the hill, possibly in Zinta, waiting for the right time to make a run for the fence, day after day waiting for some, year after year. Being driven to the border, Najam asked the driver to stop close to the foot of the hill. About 25 boys encircled him their number rising like water finding its level. There are portraits of all the boys. There is also a list with their names, ages and countries of origin. But none of these documents have ever been shown to the public. Here is a possible list with gaps in place of all the present and future boys of that Seyuta encampment. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Ok, donc on va essayer ça. Là où je suis né, les tombes cachées des rebelles, des corps en centaines versés dans des fosses de vraies poubelles. Le cœur lassé des vieillards, ce n'est une éternelle haine qu'il transmettait sans peine aux adultes et aux gaillards. L'âme pourtant fragile des femmes, laissée par la lame de ces milieux de morts. Separate from beloved Your dead or a son as brother, not counting other relatives, all dead in the Tous nous attendions la guerre pour enfin nous... In Kidira, as I approached the border station a hundred paces away, I stopped to catch the words of a man standing by himself, reclining on an electric pole. The street was busy, idlers mingling with passengers, hooting cars synchronous with bleating goats. The man's head was inclined downwards and his voice was subdued as a whisper. But I'd been walking so close I heard him. Today and tomorrow, God's time is the best.
Then we sat under a mimosa tree. I was making this trip because I chose to write a book about the Senegal River and its tributaries and the lives of the people who lived along its banks. I wasn't caught in a better life in Europe. His ragged backpack told the opposite. His travels were an imperative, harsher than a choice. I had read only the epigraph before he stopped me. Even a life full of holes, a life of nothing but waiting, is better than no life at all. He spoke with his eyes shut. It was two-sided, crumpled and time-worn, advertising an exhibition of photographs. Two children in the picture were playing in front of an advert box in a Ports Transit area in Tangier. The ship in the picture was luminous with fluorescent light, harbored on a blue sea, or approaching anchorage. Calm as a stone.
I am in Kidira, waiting. waiting. My friend was arrested. arrested. We were standing in front of a train. train. I took the photograph with my phone. phone. Two policemen approached us. Approached they us. asked for identifying papers. papers. I brought out my passport. passport. My friend had none. none. When he was being taken away, he smiled at me. Smiled but at his me. face contracted into many furrows and he held open his palms like a supplicant. supplicant. I watched him retreating, retreating, half expecting he would turn to look at me. Look at he me. didn't. They didn't. Now it was clear that our relationship was not one among equals. equals. I have waited for his reappearance. I have dreamed of him reclining on an electric pole, reciting a chant. Today, Today and, and tomorrow, tomorrow God's, God's time, time is, is the, the best. best. I have searched for him. I have been warned by policemen against circling the border station, peeking through cobwebbed shutters. Yet, without his name, I am told I cannot be given any information. In the dozens of hours we spent together, I didn't ask for his name, and he didn't ask for mine.
My dear Emmanuel, will you draw a dinghy for me? I was once told that parts of dinghies are named after good mermaids who befriend the sons of fishermen. Imagine your boats will carry a lot of passengers. It will be rolled slowly, wavering in the afternoon sea. Color it deep, dark brown. In the blue of the Mediterranean, against the white vastness of nothing from horizon to horizon, it will be noticeable by a rescue ship from afar. Now you are a boat maker. You will hear about this news in due course. This certainty, or to be less optimistic, this resignation, is one shared by anyone who makes a life in the traffic of borders. A life of being away from home only to return tainted by wanderlust, unable to stay. A traveler for whom all restless cities appear similar in size and in labyrinths.
power in human figures and watch the interminable horizon of lost love. I know you twice, first as a jour, distant beauty. And since here, I spend a considerable amount of time observing trees. They are dense in the distance, sparse as I approach. Only when I am close enough do I notice their singularities. And yet, because I do not recognize any of them, they remain anonymous to me. In the city where you and I lived, there were hardly any trees to serve as metaphor. Only now I am away. Do I realize that for you, I must become a tree. Every tree is the opposite of wandering. Oh mm-hmm.